morning. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, family. God, good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. I am blessed to have you here, and I'm thankful that you are with us, and I'm thankful that you are with me today, this morning, right now, for this season, for this time. Amen. We're here. This is day four of the 21 days of impact, and I'm praying and I'm trusting and believing in God that he will have an impact during these 21 days in my life and in your life. But I've been praying for you and your family, believe it or not. For everybody who connects to this, I'm praying that this will be a supernatural bridge between God and man if you don't already have the connection. I hunger for the connection with God. I hunger for the time that I could spend in the kingdom of God with other kingdom people. But I also... I am, you know, always thinking about the other people who are not connected to God for whatever reason. They may have so many different reasons and in their life, it might be reasons that make sense to them. It might be hurt. It might be pain. It might be a betrayal. It might be church hurt. It might be all kinds of things, misunderstandings of the scriptures. It could be, uh, you know, that they think this is all made up thing to control society or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm always hungering for my connection with God. Amen. And I'm doing this 21 day fast, not only for um, personal breakthroughs or personal impact or personal miracles. Amen. I'm doing it for the overall miracles of those who find themselves in a place of needing a miracle or of needing impact in their lives or of needing a closer connection with God. So today we're going to be talking about closer with God, closer with God. And listen, before anything, let me just readjust a little vocabulary. You know, when I say God, I mean, by definition, I mean the supreme other, the eternal being, God, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm talking about someone named Jesus who is God in the form of a man. That became, you know, the word that became flesh and dwelt among his people. And yet his very own people rejected him. I'm talking about the one who was crucified, who died and three days later rose again. Then ascended to heaven, but promised that he would send back one just like him. Holy Spirit God, who lives in every single believer. So when I say God, I don't just mean gods, like Greek gods or mythology, stuff like that. I'm talking about one God, one true, living, holy, righteous, loving, holy God. Amen. That's the God I'm talking about. And by the way, God is not God's name. He tells us his names in the scripture. Amen. But we know the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And some people, it's crazy. Some people say, you're preaching the American gospel or you're American Christian or you're coming from an American viewpoint of Christianity. I'm like, wow, I'm coming from the point of the scriptures, period. Amen. I'm coming from uh, the language that I could read, of course, it's translated into English. Um, if I was Greek, I would be reading Greek. If I was uh, Jewish, I'd be reading Hebrew, amen, or Aramaic. But I'm not. It's not American. So yes, I'm coming from this viewpoint. So when I mention God, because I know God is, you know, could be anything to a lot of people. When you say, do you believe in God? A lot of people say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. And you say, do you believe Jesus is God? Then there's a problem. There's an issue because Jesus is um, the issue. Amen. So right. hunger for connection, growing closer to God, closer with God. Amen. So let me greet some people this morning before I get into this. Good morning, Pastor Michael Jakes. Good morning. God bless you as well. My brother, your brother Jerry, man. Good morning. God bless you, man. Welcome to the morning Devo. Brother Damien, salute. God bless you, man. Welcome to... The morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. So let's do this, man. Let's get into it. You know, because during this fast, I don't, you know, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this fast, first and foremost. There's people doing this all around the nation, all around the country, all around my community, all around the world. Some people started on the first first of January um, for a new start, a refresh, a reset. Amen. Um, in, in my home church, the word that came from the Lord is to be intimate. Amen. To be closer with God, um, to be intentionally intimate. Amen. And that's the word for um, this year 
uh, from that God gave to my home and local church. Now, whether you want to grab onto that word or not, it's up to you. Amen. It's always a good thing to grab onto the prophetic word of God for your life. You know, it could be something a little different. But ultimately, if God, through the Holy Spirit, is speaking to his people, then it should be kind of like all together. Amen. We could be unified, but we don't have to be uniform. So it's. It's available to you, that prophetic word from the Lord. Amen. Good morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you as well. So let's get into it. I'm going to give you a minute to share this out. Share this to the people um, that God leads you to share to. Amen. If you had 60 seconds left, who would you reach out to? Amen. Share it to those people. Amen. And if they're not on social media, no problem. If you know how to copy this link or you could um, send them to soulwinnerswithaz.org. Amen. And it's right there on the homepage. This video right now, the stream is right there on the homepage for all those people um, that don't have social media and that you know. Just send them to soulwinnerswithaz.org so we can get into it. Good morning, um, John Wackus. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So I'm going to give you a minute to share this out. When we come back, we'll get into it. Welcome back to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. If this is your first time joining in, God bless you. I welcome you personally to the Morning De- Devotion. We're devoting the first of the day. To some, this is not early. For me, this is early in the morning. But to some, they wake up at 4 35, 30 in the morning, and they're already up and they're into their day. Um, at 4 35, 30 in the morning, I'm either just getting to sleep sometimes or I'm in my like third dream or something. I rarely ever dream though, so that's not really true. Um, I'm not a dreamer. Um, I dream during the day. Amen, if that makes any sense to any dreamers out there. But I rarely ever have dreams. And when I do have dreams at night, you know, during my sleep, it's usually something that means something to somebody. And I'll literally go online or I'll literally call somebody or text somebody the dream if they're in the dream to see if it really means anything to them or if it really connects um, to them or, or not. Amen. So that's what I do in my dreams. Good morning, Sister Joanne. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So my intent this morning is for us to go to a place to grow closer to God. Amen. Connecting with God through fasting can take many different forms, as you know. And I said this um, during the week already. Some people do a three-day no-food fast. Some people do a 21 days of Daniel fast. Um, some people do uh, intermittent fast. That's what I do all year. And intermittent fast is this. Um, a certain time of the night, like for me, it's 10 o'clock at night. I try not to eat after 10 and then to the next day around 12 or 1 o'clock, I'll eat again. Intermittent fast. I think that prepares my body and my mind, amen, to function more properly, especially with the lack of sleep because I'm up all night, which I don't suggest, amen, amen. Uh, at this point, I should be getting eight hours sleep. I'm probably getting six hours sleep. So I'm two hours off of the, of the target. But I believe that intermittent fast that I, I do all year helps the body reset. Amen. And it keeps focus uh, into your body. Amen. But connecting with God through fasting can take many different forms. You should fast from anything that you rely on more than God. And I talk about this a lot if you follow me. Whatever you put before God becomes an idol so we're not supposed to place anything before God 
and I, I grew up in a culture, and I'm in a culture, a Latino culture, that there's a lot of men um, that will do anything for their family. And they will always say, I put my children first, and a lot of women too. They say, my kids come first. Amen? And a lot of times, at least in my experience, my experience where I see people say that, they're not even married in the culture that I'm from. They just say, listen, we have kids. We're living together. We're going to put them first. Do you realize if they put their children first, they're actually idolizing their children? It's crazy, but it's true. Whatever you put before God is an idol. Then as you go throughout your day, right, you have the opportunity to build dependence on God by trusting in him. And boy, um, if depending on the type of fast you're doing, especially the no food fast, which is the biblical you know, one that usually, at least in my opinion, has the most power, the most result is the no food fast, the way Jesus fasted, amen, and other prophets in the, in the Old Testament um, fasted as well, no food. Um, as you go about your day, you're going to have your dependence and your trust has to be in God because after a while, you know, after the third, fourth day without eating food, you're going to know, you're going to find out quick who's in charge. Is King Stomach or King Jesus? So, person by person, it'll be different. Amen. Um, each of us have various priorities in our lives. Amen. Each of us have different viewpoints on things. Like social media, for instance, is not a bad thing to fast. I'm on here because I have a ministry on here. Uh, I try to be careful to do just ministry on here. That's why my page looks like a, my, like a YouTube page. It has nothing but videos and, you know, preaching and encouraging words and stuff like that. Every now and then I throw family pictures because my wife shares it on my page, um, which is all good. But yeah, I'm a real person. I have, you know, a life. Um, I'm not only, you know, on this social media, media ministry, but I do post other things, but 90% of the time, if you scroll through my page, it's a whole bunch of videos and teachings and preachings, a couple of music videos and stuff like that. That's what I use social media for. So it's not really a bad thing to be on social media, but it could play a negative role in your life if you're not careful. It depends on your cravings. At this point, my cravings are all out of whack. Just for certain reasons that the way I'm fasting, my, my cravings are all out of whack right now. But when you pursue a relationship with God, you're going to draw closer to him. A lot of people are not on a pursuit of God. Uh, not, a lot, not a lot of people are on a pursuit for truth. A lot of people are on a pursuit for happiness, right? Not for the truth. And if you're not in a, a pursuit for truth, you won't find God because God is true. He is the truth. Amen. So if you're in a pursuit for happiness, you won't probably fast. You won't probably do these things because you just want to feel good all the time. You want to do things that make yourself feel good. And during a 21 day fast or any type of fast, I don't think it's going to really feel good necessarily. It could be depending on how God responds to you during your fast. Or maybe you could have a supernatural increase of energy during your fast in the beginning. But for me, um, it's not my favorite part of the year. I do it because I know that Jesus did it. Amen. And if God did it through Jesus, amen, then there has to be 100% benefit of doing it uh, for the right purpose like we spoke about yesterday. Amen. So what is your piece of candy, so-called that is getting in the way of your nourishment for God or with God or getting closer with God. What is it? It could be that one thing. It could be that one thing that if you take that out of your life, then your relationship with God will be closer. Amen. God bless you, Sister Marisol. Good morning. God bless you as well. Amen. So it could be that one thing. What is that one thing that could be in the way of you getting closer to God? Well, let's read some scriptures here. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, 
For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The one thing the devil was trying, one of the one of the, one of the temptations or one of the things the devil was trying to use um, to try to fool the Lord Jesus was this, the world, the kingdoms of the world. You might be focusing on that gold and that silver that the world is offering. The world makes itself look very pretty. If you're ever in the, I have a traveling, a travel website and we have a, a travel business, Amen. Um, that I really don't concentrate too much on, but uh, I use it as a sponsor for my network. And when you click onto the link, uh, it takes you to all these beautiful places around the world that you could literally go and for a very good price, especially now during this pandemic, you could get to these places. They are like paradises on earth and people will concentrate on the kingdoms, right? And the glory of this world. Because the world shines itself up and makes it makes itself look glamorous all the time. So the enemy will try to tempt you with the world and the glory of this world. But like Jesus said, we got to let him go. Uh, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. We won't serve money. I don't serve money. I don't serve the world system. I don't serve the government. I'm a good citizen, but I don't serve the government I make sure I have my worship for God and my closeness to God first before anything else. I serve Jesus first, amen, and then I serve others, and then you. So it's always, that gives me joy. Jesus, others, and then you. That'll give you true joy, amen, and that's the joy of the Lord, which, by the way, is your strength if you're a born-again believer, amen? So let's keep on going. And do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. One of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. One of them. Amen. And Romans and book of Acts and all the Gospels are my favorite books in the New Testament. But listen, as we go along, we're not done. I mean, we're only on... I mean, I'm on day four. You might be on day 14. You might be 10 days ahead of me if you started on the fourth, uh, excuse me, on the first. Amen. But wherever you are, you might not even be started yet. Or you might not even feel that you should start to fast right now. It's all good. Amen. I'm just sharing the journey of those being part of those who are in this journey of a 21 day fast. 21 days of impact. 21 days of miracles. Amen. 21 days to get closer with God. And I believe in that closeness that you'll find, that you'll get, amen, with God. It will be a life changer or it will be a reset or it will be a recharge to your life to get back to the place where you were when you first got saved. That fire, that zeal, right? Now you're more mature. You should be more mature that you won't be so religious. When I first got saved, I was um, religious Sam, here he comes, preaching the gospel, sending everybody to hell if they don't believe in Jesus. Uh, because I found the truth. And that truth was so amazing to me. I was like, everybody, well, how come everybody doesn't have this truth? How come everybody's not following Jesus? That's the way I felt when I first got saved. I said, why is anybody not being transformed by the power of God? Because I was transformed by the power of God. I was made new by the power of God. So I was thinking, if God could do that for me, the one who was out there far out, even though people said, oh, you were a good guy, even before you got saved. I said, really? I must have hit a lot of stuff really well because I wasn't the good guy. Amen? I was actually dying in sin, not living in it. So when I got saved, I was like, everybody needs this truth. But I was doing, going about it in a very religious way. That's why religion and me really don't get along. The only true religion is when you help the widow, when you clothe the homeless, when you, you know, when you help those who are poor and in need, amen, that's true religion, according to the scripture, that is true religion, so we don't have to be, um, you know, bombarded with religious thoughts all the time, amen, and churchianity, we need to be following Christ and getting closer with God, you know, sometimes I hear conversations, I say, that's too, I always say, that's too churchy for me, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, that's too much church, because I'm not a church person, I am a son of the living God, I am part of the body of Christ, right? I am a living sacrifice unto the Lord. And my mind has been renewed. My heart has been changed. Amen. And I'm walking forward in what Jesus has for me through 
his spirit. Amen. So I know it was short, but that's all I had. Amen. I really want you to get closer with God during this 21 day fast. I don't want this to be some kind of um, religious experiment or something that, you know, you have to do to check off of your list because you're just doing it because it's tradition. Uh, you're just doing it because, you know, um, everybody else is doing it. Right. So you might as well join into it. No, I'm praying and I'm hoping that you will really have impact in your life. And not only will God impact your life, but he'll impact other lives by you testifying of what God is doing during his 21 days of impact, 21 days of miracles, 21 days of getting closer with God. Amen. There's no, you know, why not? Why not go for it? Because this life is so short. It's fleeting. You know, I'm getting calls left and right. People are going home to be with the Lord. and Other people are going to be separated with God eternally. Every day people are passing out. In other words, they're leaving this world and they're going to eternity. Amen. Either to be with God or to be eternally separated from him. So listen, if this is some kind of um, holy habit, I want it. Amen. I want to do it. I know every year that I've done it, it set up the year for whatever came my way. It set up the year to be, I could be an overcomer, even though I'm already an overcomer according to scripture. But I could overcome things that normally, if I wasn't, you know, in contact or in connection with the Lord in a deep way, then a lot of stuff would already blew me off the map already. But thank God through his word, thank God through a holy habit of fasting and praying, thank God for our brothers and sisters in the Lord who connect and who really believe and who really love one another, who really follow Jesus. Amen. Thank God that we still have this authenticity, authenticity still going on in the body of Christ. Amen. Brother Rich Tyler, God bless you. I'm going to try to read this. Amen. We are really dead in Christ and risen with him. We are with, uh, we are to view life through the lens of Christ. I might have to read this again. And Holy Spirit alive in Christ. That means our life is not our own. Prioritize our relationship to please God and treat people with care. Put this back on. I'm sorry. People with care and kindness of the spirit because we love God and we cannot see with our natural eyes but the love uh, but the but we should love your brother or sister because you're able to see in your present life I fasting fasting makes I'm sorry I'm almost done sorry rich fasting make a focus and humble doesn't change God but changes us amen and like I always say, uh, if we do these things, it's not going to, you know, change God. It's going to change us. So whether you praise God, you bless God, um, that's not going to help God. And I know a lot of people are cursing God. They're cursing Jesus. It doesn't hurt God. It doesn't hurt Jesus. Amen. But I wouldn't suggest anybody curse or mock God. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God is an eternal supreme being. Amen. Uh, he's all powerful, almighty, all knowing. You know, there's nothing and no one like my God. He's a real God. So how can you begin to pursue God more today? Let's start from today. If you have never fasted, if you have never been on a journey to get closer to God, amen. If you've never been on a journey to please God, the only way you can please God is through faith in him, trusting in Jesus. If you've never done it, today is a new day. Today is your day. Today you can start. And you could begin to pursue God more today than any other day in your life. And today will mark the day that you started a closer relationship, a hunger for connection. You're closer with God today. Amen. You can start anytime. You don't have to start, you know, on the first of any month. You don't have to wait for another believer to tell you to start a closer relationship with God. You can start today by the power of the Holy Spirit. He will reveal himself to you because the, the main thing. If we serve an invisible God, obviously, but he reveals himself. Amen. He reveals himself, whether it could be in a dream, whether it could be in the word of definitely in the word, whether it could be through an evangelist, a preacher, an apostle, a teacher, you know, a prophet. Listen, he'll reveal himself to you how he wants to. But you have to seek him out diligently, wholeheartedly. Amen. And you will find him. Yes, he's an invisible God. So the people will say, how can you believe in a God you can't see, you can't touch, you can't feel? Um, that's not true. 
I feel God. I see God through creation. Amen. Right? I feel God. I see God. Amen. Through other things. Of course, not maybe looking at myself. I'm created in the image of God. Amen. But it doesn't mean that I look like him. Amen. The image of God is, you know, another Bible study, another morning Devo we could get into. That's deep right there in the image of God. But with that said, I hope you were blessed. I hope you find yourself hungering for a connection with God. Amen. And fasting really connects you in that way. It refocuses your attention. And food is overrated, by the way. Amen. Um, it's good when it's working in your favor because there's a lot of bad foods out there. And unfortunately, we live in a society that uh, if it tastes good, just eat it, no matter if it's good or bad for you. And we need to be careful with that. And every time I, f I fast, I start focusing on um, the value of healthy foods instead of junk food and all that other stuff. So pray for me and my family. I'll continue to pray for you and your family for 21 days of impact. Amen. Starting today, if this is your start, welcome to the Morning Devo. Welcome to the 21 Days of Impact. Mm -hmm. And I speak 21 days of miracles over your life in the mighty name of Jesus over you in your life. Amen. Uh, Rich says, in the past, I fasted worldly music to have more of an appetite for worship music. More of it. Very good. That's a good one right there. Amen. That's a good one. Um, that would turn that that would turn our you know intake around of music and media. That's a good idea. Some people fast social media. Um, Rich said he pa um, fasted worldly music, which is a good thing to fast worldly music. Because um, every time I listen to worldly music, it'll it'll put me in different places in my mind. If I hear a certain song um, that I knew when I was growing up, it immediately places me to that time. And I can literally see myself as a teenager or as a young adult um, bobbing my head to that type of music. And the environment that I was around usually wouldn't be a good environment. That's why I, I when I do my DJ sets, I do play secular music per se, mostly if it has a, a vocals that are not pleasing to the Lord. I'll play the beat just to remind people of the era that I'm from. I'll just play the instrumental. Then when it comes to dance music, I usually play 80s and 90s only that always have a good message because I never knew, and I found this out after I got saved when I started digging back in my crates as a born-again Christian. I never knew there was a lot of gospel house that I had. Music that was edifying God, amen? And it was house music, dance music, but it was actually good um, gospel dance music. I never knew because when I wasn't saved, I wasn't looking for gospel music, but I was being evangelized um, through the music all along, not even knowing. So when I got saved, then I... I re, re dug out those songs and I play them on my mixes as well. Amen. It's called Gospel House. If you ever knew anything about that genre, Amen. Sister Joyce, Amen. Thank you for the fasting encouragement. God bless you and your family as well. Sister Joyce, God bless you. And let's expect these 21 days of miracles and impact to be a reality this year, this season, and this space in our lives in the name of Jesus. So God bless you. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.